Welcome, bloody welcome, dickheads. Live build stream time. It's been a little fucking while, has it not? What's a fucking crazy last month I've had? We had a YouTube strike and a subsequent timeout. Thanks, YouTube. Fucking love your work. Striking old videos from 2018, predating your fucking change to YouTube policies. Uh, and then I had to spend a fair bit of time cleaning the fucking channel of, uh, of websites. Big thank you to Shane Beekman. Let me just adjust the... There we go. Uh, big thanks to Shane for helping me uh, clean over 800 fucking videos of, uh, of websites. It was a monumental task. So even after I finished my week in timeout, uh, I had to get that done like first before I did anything. Priorities were to not get another strike. Um, but yeah, got that finished and then I fucked off to South Africa for a week. So <laughs> it all kind of happened at once. So it's been um, it's been a, a bit too long between build streams. So apologies for that. But um, we're back now. I'm getting back into the swing of things. So um, yeah, we got a few few tasty treats. Most of it from BP Mods or uh, or Dogpo. There they do the manufacturing. Hazard RTA. Um, I've heard a few things from a few people about it being quite good. It goes in an RTA, which it comes with obviously, like a little RTA tank, but it also comes, uh, well, goes in a, uh, a fucking Boro. So that's pretty interesting. Don't know whether we've seen that before. Um, we've got a TMF RDA V2 from um, Dam Vape, a Labs RTA, and a, a SAM. Not a SAN. Sam, <laughs> a sandwich, a sandwich RDA, uh, which is quite funny because my name being Sam, thanks for making an RDA for me. <laughs> so uh, what we should do is put a little pole up, put a little pole ski, um, 
starter poll, there we go, as to what we're going to build. And you guys can vote. Let's just get this going. Uh, so what do we got? We got the hazard. We got the TMF. We have the labs. And we have the, uh, the SAM. Sammed which. Have they just misspelled sandwich? I would love to know if they've just if it's like the Chinese misspelling stuff. <laughs> Alright, get your votes in, dickheads. Um, you can vote while we do a few little hellos in the chat. And uh, crack a beer, of course. Crack a beer ski. So let's say hello to a few people. We've got Nick Wicks. How are you, Nick? Fowler Brown, Rudy's in the house, Jason, Rump, how are you? Uh, we have Mobine, Babe and Grind, g'day, g'day, Danielle, how are you? Glad you're enjoying your ether, that's awesome to hear. Cicero is here, damn it! G'day, how are you, Cicero? Charlie, Charles Johnson, how are you, mate? Uh, busy, GT, Twin Cam, how are you, mate? Az is here. Uh, we got Ben, we got Will, we got Subaru Nerd. Good stuff, good choice of vehicle, my friend. Uh, Dean T, motherfucker Chooch is in the house. Lurker Jerry is lurking. Uh, we got Harry Muff, how are you, Harry? We have Elite Force, we have Dustin Dedos. Mr. Ashton Palmer's in the house. How are you, Ashton? Good to see you, mate. Stu. Lori. Uh, who else we got? Aileen. Come on, Aileen. And we have Jeremy M. Dean of the Dead. Sky. How are you? Who else is there? Yoshi. Hayes. I can't read your name. It's like. I. The A G F Z A G F S. It's like you just fucking hit your keyboard and went. Ugh. So, <laughs> hello to you. Um, Nightmare six six six. Stuart Valentine. D J Engel. Lee Turbofield. Dan Brown. Nick Audit. How are you? And. Aimvec. There we go. Subaru nerd. Subaru is the only way to go rally life. Whoop whoop. <laughs> Good stuff. Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, so that's the hellos. Let's um, let's just have a beer, eh? It's midday. Let's have a fucking beer ski. Let's drink a beer. Let's drink it here. All right, uh, I have a big German beer today. I have had this beer about four years ago. I did a little check in the uh, Untapped app. Um, quite useful. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Untapped, it's a, an app. You can uh, track all of your beers, keep track of what you've had. So I was able to see when I, whether I'd had this one, and I had. I can't remember it because it was four years ago. Um, but yeah, the app tells me that uh, I had this on the 19th of February. I gave it a 3.7, I think, which is a, a solid rating. Uh, so if you want to follow my beer debauchery, jump on Untapped. I'm just on there as Vaping Bogan. Um, and um, yeah, you can see what people have rated beers so you can avoid buying shit ones. Anything 3.7 and above is worthy of a purchase generally. Anything below that, yeah, not so good. Anyway, this one is uh, from uh, Polana Munchen. I think I'm saying that right, Polana Munchen. Uh, it is a, a Weiss beer, so a wheat beer, a Munich wheat beer to be exact. Uh, Germany's number one, number one Weiss beer. That's a big claim. And that's got a pretty high rating for a mass produced beer though. 3.7 is high for something mass produced. Uh, it's all in Deutsch on the back here. So I don't think I can tell you much about it, but we were to consult the app. 
Uh, aromas of coconut sprouts. Coconut sprouts. All right, coconut sprouts, clove up front. Less banana compared to other Weiss beers. Uh, a little bit of bread and herbal spice of the hops notes. Mild sweetness and mild bitterness. No extreme ends. Feels mostly crisp and clean. There you go. There you go. Well, we should probably get a, a nice German glass, shouldn't we? Huh? A nice big German fucking Stein. Huh? We should do that. Uh, alcohol content on this fucker is... There's so much on the back here. Five and a half percent, there you go. Five and a half percent, and it is brewed, I'm guessing, in Munich. Yes. Munich, Bayern, Germany. How's that for a poor cunts? Bloody perfect. So being a wheat beer, it's got a little bit of murkiness to it. You usually get that with the wheats. A bit of a, a cloudy complexion. Put that to one side. Yeah, notes of banana. Definitely got that sort of banana-y wheat beer sort of smell. Fucking cheers, cunts. Good to be back building with you. Yeah, that is a good wheat beer. That is tasty. That is very tasty. I don't get the coconut sprouts. <laughs> I can't taste sprouts. That's right, that's a nice head. Um, but I do get the banana and I do get the little, there's a bit of a slight spice in there, which is kind of nice. Yeah, wheaty. It's got a nice, um, yeah, nice multi sort of backbone to it. I still get plenty of the banana, which I do like about wheat beers. And there's yeah, just a little bit of that kind of nice spiciness in there. There's a, a subtle bitterness, which is quite nice. It's a good fucking beer. A good fucking beer ski. All right. I'm going to pair it up with a liquid, of course. So, where is it? Where's my bottle of juice? Uh, I cracked into some liquids that I, uh, I brought back from Dubai. I've still got so many liquids to, to get through and try. Uh, this one is from uh, Medusa. Now, I had a Medusa liquid a little while ago. I featured uh, their peach, I think. It was a peach iced tea, I think it was, uh, that I really quite liked. Uh, they're from Malaysia, I believe, and this one is Krim. Krim soda. It's an interesting way of spelling cream. I believe it, or it tastes like a cream soda to me, so I think that's what they're, they're, they're trying to say there with a, a Krim soda. Uh, soda. It's fucking delicious. Uh, I did the review on the... Um, the Tita. The Tita yesterday, and uh, when I did my little... Uh, build and wicking, I popped in this cream soda flavour and it's been fucking awesome. Mmm. A really nice cream soda. I love creaming soda. Creamy soda, creaming soda, however you call it. Um, most countries have got creaming soda. It's um, it's that creamy, kind of colery sort of soda and it's it's pretty bang on. Mm. Did I see Mr. Battery Mooch is in the house? What is up, Logan? Just a quick stop by to say hello. Hoping you and the family are well. Hello, old chat folks. Mooch, so good to see you, mate. I hope you're doing well. Hope you're not freezing too much over there in New York City. I know it's starting to get pretty cold. But uh, Merry Christmas to you, Mooch. And um, like someone said in the chat, 
Big thank you to what you do for us in the vaping community, testing batteries and telling us the good ones and the shit ones. Anyway, back to the pairing. Let's put a bit of cream. I reckon this will work because the wheat beer's got a little bit of that creamy banana in there. I reckon creamy soda should go nicely. It does. It's kind of changing the flavour up a little bit. I'm not sure what it's doing, but it is. lifting a little bit more of a, a bit more of the banana out of it and maybe a little bit of a kind of caramel flavor you know your creamy soda's got a little bit of that kind of caramel cola feel I reckon I'm getting a bit more of a caramel out of it yeah lifting some caramel notes out of the uh, the wheat beer and blending nicely with the banana, the creaminess. I've really been enjoying this liquid. It's all I've vaped since I put it in there last night. Just been loving it. Mm. Yeah, Crim Soda from uh, Medusa. I don't know whether uh, it's super available internationally, being a Malaysian liquid, but um, yeah, if you can find it, this is the salt version. I'm sure they do a non-salt version, but it's fucking bloody good. Love me a cream soda. All right, well, that's the beer done. We should probably uh, have a little look at our our pole uh, and see what we're going to be building. The Hazard, yeah, I thought that might be the case. The Hazard RTA slash Boro Bridge is out in front on 51%, so I think that's fairly definitive. Oh, excuse me. Let's um, let's get the hazard and um, and crack into it. Let's have a little look. See, uh, good. We haven't got any websites on here now. I think, yeah. So this is designed by um, a cross, but it's manufactured by Dovpo. I can't show you the back because of you know the old websites and YouTube. But yeah, Dovpo's doing the manufacturing. Um, have a cross done anything in, in the past? Are they like completely fucking new? I don't think I've heard of them before. Let's open it up. In the side, you get the tank that you can put the bridge in and you get the bridge as such. It's quite an interesting little concept, this one. As the tank rolls away. What else do we get in here? We get some specifications and we get some airflow pins, a bunch of O-rings, gaskets, uh, spare little peak caps or, or one spare peak cap. So I think this is going to be fairly restricted by the look of the pins. They're not super wide. So I think this is going to be geared towards your, your tighter drawers. 2.5 I think is the widest pin that I can see there. So I reckon we're going to go MTL in this. I reckon. MTL build. Alright, so it looks sort of like a, a normal bridge that you might get for your Boro devices, but as we've already alluded to, uh, you can put this in a tank that it comes with. I think today I want to put it in a um, in a Boro tank and run it in a Boro device because I got a new a new Boro bridge, a new Boro bridge, a new Boro mod that I'm very excited to fucking try out and start using. I'm going to show you guys in a second. It's pretty fucking awesome. Uh, but yeah, so you take your bridge, you put it inside like basically a little RTA thing and it becomes an RTA. So you can just whack that on any old mod with a 510 connection, filling it. You pull off this little cap at the top here 
you've got a little little fill port and you fill it up like so I think this is a 510 drip tip is it a five? Oh, you can't take it out okay so you sort of that's a fixed I think it's fixed yeah so you just got one one option there you might be able to put a 510 drip tip in that oh you could so if you wanted to run it doesn't really fit Oh, it's very snug. Yeah, you could run your own 510 drip tip on there and get a very long thing going on, but like I said, I want to use this in a bridge, in a boro tank, so that I can, um, and you've got adjustable airflow down the bottom here, if you want to use it like so. But like I said, I really want to use this in a, in a boro tank because I've got this new mod. So I'm going to put this to one side. Harry's keen for this one. I'm keen for this one. So let's have a look at this little bridge here. You got like a little kind of gas mask engraving on the front. Pins down the bottom here. Let's see, what size is this? Three millimeters. So three is gonna be the widest pin that you get. It's gonna be relatively restrictive. There's no 3.5, four or 4.5. But like I said, I want to use this with an MTL, I reckon. So, kind of typical Bora Bridge sort of shape, but you've got these little caps, these little peak insulator caps. You take those off, and there you have your build deck. Come on, focus, Frank. Frankie, focus. There you go. So, fairly condensed little chamber in there. Wicking, it's gonna come through these little chutes in the bottom there. So you're gonna sort of tuck your cotton into the little half pipes and uh, off you go. Now it looks like you've got four terminals but they just put two screws in. So you can choose which side the screws go in depending on whether you've got a clockwise or an anti-clockwise wrapped coil. So that's fairly smart, I like that means it's going to be sort of user universally friendly depending on coil direction. Uh, let's, um, before we build it, let's fucking uh, put the pin that I want to use in here. As I said, I want to go MTL. Because three millimeters is a little narrow for me on direct lung. And you got the option for, it looks like, Phillips or flat. It comes with Phillips installed, but there's also some flat head screws included. So if you want to run flat heads instead of Phillips, that's an option, which is always good, giving people the choice. Okay, so what have we got here? We've got a two, have we got a one? We do have a one. All right, let's go one millimeter airflow pin. One millimeter airflow pin. Take out the three. It looks like we can just thread this straight onto a mod. It's got some 510 threads down the bottom here. Snug that up, there we go, all right. One millimeter pin installed. Screw straight onto a mod. There we go. So we need a coil. We need a coil, cunts. Alright. We 
need a little uh, MTL coil. like around 0 0.7, 0 0.8, something like that. I reckon this will work. Let's go with a little uh, Asian kitty coil. Alright. So, shout out to Asian kitty. I think she's over in uh, Sweden. Little uh, three core single boro, 0.7 ohms, I think. That's what we're looking at here. Staggered fuse Clapton, SFC. Now they come parallel uh, legs, but I'll give it an extra half wrap, so it'll probably jump up a little bit from 0.7, which is fine. But a beautiful coil. It's a very tiny staggered fuse Clapton. Look at that. That's fucking just tiny, tiny. I don't know how you stagger wrap at such a small gauge. But I think it'll fit in here. The trick is we got to swap our... Oops. No. Oh, no. There we go. Come on. Bump the cable. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, cunts. If I touch that cable, it doesn't like it. Uh, we've got to swap our uh, screws around because these coils are wrapped in a clockwise direction. And these screws... Oh, no. We still don't have... Come on. No. Nope. What's going on with the camera? All right. 
There we go. Sorry, that little technical difficulty. As I was saying, we've got to swap our screws around. Fun, fun, fun times of trying to get tiny screws. Back and come on. Get in your hole. There we go. One is in. Frank being too temperamental, says to you. Uh, yeah, it's this fucking. It's the connection, the cable from my camera to my computer interface. And if you bump it, you don't like it. All right. We have swapped our screws around. We are now ready to install. Install our wire, our coil. Give me a snug fit in here. Quite small screw heads. I will point that out. That screw heads are teeny tiny. Not the easiest thing to get these sort of slightly flat wires in but not too bad we're getting there we're in on one side Not bad, not bad. I'm just gonna tighten this little screw head down a little more. That nice and snug, there we go. Everything I think is f c Frank. Fucking hell, mate. There we go. He loses focus, and then instead of going the right direction, he fucking starts going un more unfocused. Fucking useless. All right, that looks like a pretty good position, I think, for our coil. Uh, We'll do a little little snip. Now there's not a lot of space here, so you've got to get in pretty close, I reckon. One coil leg. Make sure these the legs of your coil aren't sticking out too far because there's very, very little space. It's not super forgiving with your coil leg length. 
if you don't cut it short enough, it's going to touch that top cap. I think we're okay though. Now, in terms of height, maybe I need to come down a little lower. We'll find out when we start pulsing and pinching it. Let's just see. 13.6 watts, that'll do. Did I miss the great coil hunt? I hope not. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> it wasn't I wasn't super great actually. I think I did pretty well today. Often you see me fuffing about trying to fucking find the right coil. Um, and I think I only looked at two different Spoilers before I settled on a set from uh, Asian Kitty. Lovely lass. Um, I'd known about her in the community for a while and it was great to meet her. And I was over in uh, fucking Birmingham at Vapor Expo in, um, in October. I think she's in Sweden. I could be that. I, could, I, I know it's a Scandinavian country. I think it's Sweden. It's either Sweden or Switzerland. That is heating up beautifully. If Frank would uh, would focus on the coil, that would be great. Thanks, Frank. That's looking pretty good. So let's uh, let's get our top cap, see whether we're touching the lid. And I think we're okay. I think we're okay. Yep. So. Oh, by the way, guys, I've just found out the chimney does come off. There you go. That makes it a bit easier now to see to see our coil in there. So that's a handy feature. Didn't realise that came off. Oof, it's a bit toasty. Let's check our resistance. Now that we've pulsed and pinched. Point six seven. That's good. Point seven. I'm happy with that. I love my sort of point seven, point eight. So point six seven is all good with me. Do one final check. Sweet. I think we are uh, ready. Ready for cotton. Let that cool down for a minute and uh, have a little, little beer break, a little beer and vape break. We need an Odin too. Well, your prayers may be answered. We won't be getting it until next year sometime, but development has started, I'll say that. Sergio, or 1.5 as Sam likes to name them. I do that just to piss off Grim. Uh, no, but it won't be called the 1.5, it will be the Odin 2. Yeah, we'll be doing a new mini and a new full size, single uh, 21700 and dual 21700. 
as it wants a new mech tube yeah i do i do want to do a mech tube um it's not super high on the priorities list just mechs aren't quite you know they're not, not so in vogue at the moment plus i want to when i do a mech tube i want it to be something cool and i haven't had any really good ideas dean of the dead chipping in with a super chat donation thank you very much uh dino um as we would you'd be known as dino here in australia we would take the of the dead and just make it dino um <laughs> that's, that's what aussies do to people's names put an o on the end of it steve-o dino damo uh thanks for your donation though mate all right let's get down there and let's put a bit of cotton in this fucker so got some um, BP cotton here. Need a little snippet. Um, yeah, good idea. <laughs> We've already got the stubby, why not have a long neck? Um, because I think long neck in the UK and the States means something different to, um, Australia. I, I think, I think a long neck is like, yeah, it's, it's like not a good name for the US or the UK market. I forget which one it is and what it means, but did float that idea and I don't think it's a don't think it's a good name for the UK as tall boy I said tall boy as well Ashton but I think we're just gonna go with stubby 21 when we do it I thought tall boy would be good I think tall boy though is like it's also like a chest of drawers <laughs> which is which is a little funny so I don't know whether we'll go with tall boy everyone's just going to call it the stubby 21 anyway the chubby yeah yeah I thought I thought about that as well uh, GT long neck is a beer bottle in the US yeah bet we call a tall bottle of beer a long neck as well. A stubby is a short bottle of beer. A long neck is the 750 mil version, the big, the big version. Um, but I think in the UK, a tall boy is something else. All right, I think we've got our cotton in now. Um, in terms of placement, I guess we just cut it in line with the end of these little caps here because you've got you've got those little wicking inlets right underneath it I'm not going to trim the cotton at all because I think these look quite adequate so tall boys a 16 ounce can of beer yeah there's that offspring song Wake up and have another tall boy. Yeah. Yeah, I was familiar with the tall boy term. So who's who's had a hazard? Who's got a hazard? Did you just did you just cut it like that? I'm thinking that you just cut it like that. And we just tuck the cotton into these little little bits here. Who's got one of these? Chop the ends and juice it up, then cap it off. That's what I thought. And then we can just, because we can kind of juice it up from there. That looks good to me. Whoopsie. Let's just make sure these little bits of cotton are not over the edge of the little sidey bits.
It wicks surprisingly for form the bottom of the cotton. Yeah. Fiddly little bugger, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so a little little bit fiddly there, David Jones. David Jones. Uh, I reckon that looks good. So let's put some liquid in it. I'm going to go with. Where is it? Where's me? There it is. My favourite tobacco. Got to be careful not to show you the uh, the website. Uh, you can't know I love the uh, the vaping fossil fosses. NET naturally extract. Frank. Frank, you fucking cunt. Focus. Uh, naturally extracted tobacco, rum and raisin. This is, um, it's it's to be no more. It's to be no more, dickheads, this liquid. Um, here in Australia, obviously, you guys know we can't sell liquid with nicotine. And the authorities tested this liquid, right? They tested this liquid. And because it's a naturally extracted tobacco, it's still got 0.001% of nicotine in it from just from the naturally extracted tobacco, right? Which is about the same amount of nicotine as a fucking tomato has. And so they have been told they can't they can't sell it. Because it's uh it's still got nicotine in it, which is fucking dumb because by those logics you you shouldn't be selling tomatoes. Because they got nicotine in them, Australia. You can't be selling tomatoes. 0.001% nicotine. Absolutely fucking ridiculous. Typical nanny state Australia. Um, yeah, you can't, you can't... You won't be able to get this liquid anymore. Which is super fucking sad because... I fucking love it. It's my... One of my favourite tobaccos. Put our little caps on. There we go. So I'm stocking up. Which fucking pisses me off. There we go. I think it's, it's in. And now we can just twist it off. Alright, guns. That is the hazard, built, wicked. Now we've got to put it in a mod, or in a tank. As I said, I have a new tank. A new tank. Uh, I have a new mod. Just arrived, uh, just before this build stream started. And um, I have been very excited. I don't, I don't get super excited about mods as much as you know I used to because you know I test a lot of them I get a lot of them but this one I was truly excited by um, and that is this gorgeous Boro mod from Mod Corporation big thanks to Valentine um, for hooking me up this is the uh, the, the Hocko the Hocko I think it is I think that's the way it's pronounced Hocko and it's fucking stunning it is, it is fucking stunning. The engravings on this Beehive edition, they, they do a bunch of different finishes. I was over in South Africa. Uh, Craig from Obey Robot has one. And uh, Rob, you guys know Big Rob. He's quite prominent in the high-end uh, scene. And he got in contact with Valentine and said, Bogan would love a mod. And Valentine hit me up and did me a fucking... No, it's not silver bet, it's aluminium. It's got the die codes chip in there. And it's just fucking gorgeous. The engravings on this thing, three stage engraving process. It's got these dope little bees all over it. It is gorgeous and it's tiny, like it's so tiny. Here it is next to a billet box. Look how small it is. It's so teeny tiny. So fucking teeny tiny. It's just, it's a fucking gorgeous mod. So, yeah, I was super excited to try this out for the first time. So, 
Um, he also did me a matching uh, Boro tank for it. I think these are like a separate, they don't come with the mod, but it's got this dope as fuck angry bee on it. Fuck yeah, it's so good. So, we're gonna go ahead and um, put our bridge in this guy. I hope it fits. Does it fit? If this doesn't fit, I'm gonna be pissed. Oh no. Does it not fit in a standard Boro? Oh no! Oh, it does. Oh, it does. It fits. It fits. It's tight though. But that doesn't matter because the wicking's not from the ends. I might need my little Boro tool for this. Big shout out to Snag 3D Printing. He does these awesome Boro tools, which you usually use to remove a Boro, but you can also use it to install a Boro if it's a little snug. that little fucker. I think that's in. Oh, except that happens. <laughs> Maybe you can't use it. Motherfucker. That didn't work at all. They're meant to help you remove sticky boros. You know, you can screw this in, it pushes the boro out, but... Problem is it got caught in the top of the chimney and it kind of, it came out. But that's all right. Because the chimney goes in a bit easier than the rest of it. There we go. We're in. We're fucking in. Take our glass. And we can fill it up. But yeah, really handy tool for when you're trying to get your boro out. Your bridge out of your, um, out of your tank and it won't come out. Because this little tool here, you, you pop it in and then you screw this guy in and it just pushes the boro out. Sweet. In she goes. Screw our little flash nut down. Still getting my head around die codes. Oops, what are you doing, die codes? Seventeen and a half watts. That's where I want it. There we go. Seventeen and a half watts, point seven ohms. Bang on where we wanted it. We need a drip tip. We need a drip tip. Oh, yes. 
This is a COPA copper drip tip from um, Trinity Tanks or Trinity Glass. This little insert in the top here that also comes with a glass one so you can swap that out. But I think that looks pretty fucking gorgeous if I do say so. All right, time to vape it, cunts. Enough gawking over the uh, the beautiful Hocko. I think it's Hocko. Am I saying that right? Where's the box gone? Hocko? I don't know what it did with the package. The Hocko E. Hocko E. Okay. Let's see. That's great. Yeah, right off the bat, that tastes great. We're getting nice little air bubbles popping up. So, I think it's wicking okay. Flavour is immediately very good. I know this juice very well, obviously. Mike, the biggest airflow pin that the Hazard comes with is a three millimeter, so it's gonna be pretty tight if you like a direct lung. That's why I went for a mouth to lung build. Uh, I put the one millimeter airflow pin in here um, because I think given the small, you know, build build space, the small, the narrow posts and everything, um, I thought it would suit this uh, this build better, uh, this um, RBA better, and it, it does. It's fucking good. And pretty cool that you can take it out and put it in a, a tank that it comes with and whack that in your normal mods. But like I said, I wanted to try out on this fucking beautiful mod. Just absolutely stunning. The engravings. Really, really well done. Very, very high caliber engravings. And the polish, the aluminium polish. Oosh. Oosh. So, initial thoughts on the hazard. Flavor is great. Airflow, really nice. The, the one millimeter pin, exactly the way I like it. Exactly the way I like it. Airflow is nice and smooth. And the flavor is very, very good. It's, it's got that really nice little condensed chamber in there. Like I said, I don't think it's gonna be great for those slightly larger, um, you know, direct lung coils that, that people do put in their Boro devices. I think it's more geared to your, your tighter air flows, your smaller coils. That's a very good point there, Shane. Thank you very much. Uh, there's fucking 136 of you cunts watching. You've only got 63 likes. Please hit the like button. It really helps the algorithms and uh, lets people know that the video is uh, is happening. This this little RBA from Cross across across. Very good. Now I did notice another super chat that I missed came in while I was busy busy. Uh, Jangles, chipping in with a cheeky 20 bucks, mate, that's awesome. Hope all is well with you and the family, brother. Thank you very much, Jangles. Uh, the family is very well, actually, very well. Mm -hmm. So thank you for the donation, Jangles. I hope you and, um, and your little, uh, little lass are doing well. Merry Christmas to you, and Merry Christmas to all of you fuckers. This is, uh, this is a great little RBA. Mm. I'm really impressed with that. Let's see, what is the price on one of these hazard RTAs? 
you're looking at 30 bucks US. 30 bucks US, I can see it on a fairly prominent US website for 30 bucks. That's a that's a pretty good deal. That's a pretty good deal, I gotta say. Yeah, with the tank option. It comes with the tank and the bridge. It's a it's an all-in-one thing. So you're kind of getting two functions there for the for the one price. 30 bucks gets you a bridge and uh, a fucking RTA. China was close to $50, Mike says. Yeah, well, I mean, some of the Chinese websites have got it, but I can see it um, on a, I can't tell you the website because of YouTube, but uh, I can see it on a very, very popular, very prominent one, one that I've known for many years, for 30 American dollary dues, which is a bit of a steal, a bit of a steal. Definitely worth, I mean, as I said, I haven't tried it in direct lung mode, but I think it's more geared to your mouth to lung sort of stuff, um, geared towards your tighter direct lung. You know, given that you've only got a three millimeter pin maximum um, option there, it's gonna be for those sort of tighter ones. All right, guys. Well, if you got any questions, fire them at me about the um, the hazard. If you don't have any questions, we shall move on to our next build, which is the sam the sandwich. <laughs> The Sandwich RDA. That's uh, in second place at the moment with 20% of the votes. Subaru nerd, we need more people in this world like you, Sam. Oh, that's very nice. Thank you. I just try to be a good person and have a bit of fun. Grouch, you want to know where I get the awesome uh, Dropkick Murphys jersey? It's a it's a hockey jersey I've got draped over the chair. Uh, I got it years ago. It was on a website in Australia that we get a lot of um, band merch from called Artist First. Artist First. Um, but I haven't seen them since. It was years and years ago that I got it. I've got another one as well, actually. But yeah, pretty cool. China now has a new tax on all vape gear. Yeah, Neil, that could be why it's a bit more expensive going directly from China. I heard that Fast Tech is closing down due to, you know, these new changes in the China policies. Uh. All right, guys, if there aren't any more questions on the hazard, Yeah, that's right, Neil. We are on to the, the sandwich. The sandwich. <laughs> How's it doing? How you doing, Swamp Thing? I'll trade you for that jersey. <laughs> Not a chance. Everyone wants my fucking... Uh, my Dropkick Murphys merch. One of my other patrons has been trying to get a flag that I have for years. I won't part with it. Solo, would you ever do a tattoo tour? Uh, I don't know, it seems a bit wanky. It seems a bit self-indulgent. All right, shall we move on to the the Sam, the Sam witch, the Sam, the Sam witch. I'm not sure if it's a spelling error or if they intended this, um, but it's again from a cross, a cross vape. Um, inside we have the RDA and a little box of accessories. Mm. 
which includes uh, some, are they spare, spare screws for the, oh, it's a squonk pin and a non, and a spare non-squonk pin. So you get two 510 pins, a spare blank one and a squonky one and a couple of screws for your deck, um, O-rings, a couple of Claptons, usual stuff. All right, the, the sandwich. There it is. Quite a clean looking little RDA, I will say. Very clean. Let's just uh, whack it on a base. If you want to get one of these, uh, whoop, dropped it. If you want to get one of these awesome Scullet mod, uh, mod, Scullet Addy stands, um, you can check out Obey Robot. It's made by our Bearded Viking, and it's pretty awesome. So we pull off our top cap. There's our deck. It's a single coiler. Little single coiler. So I guess our coil is going to go leg here, leg here. Wick's going to go that way into the little channels. And it's got kind of like a top airflow design. I don't know how good the flavor is going to be on this guy because top down airflow, not always the best, but um, that's what we've got. And you can adjust, you can adjust this spinning top piece here. Well, you got 510 drip tip, which comes out, but this piece here, there you go. It's got lots of little um, airflow options. So you've got a single hole, dual hole, honeycomb holes, and then like a large cyclops hole. And you can adjust the airflow. So there you go, two holes, one hole, large hole, and uh, honeycomb. A fairly sort of simple little design there. I quite like the look of this guy though, I tell you what, it's a nice clean looking fucker. It does actually have little engravings, little laser etchings, if Frank would focus. You can see it tells you the airflow on the outside. Frank, focus. So there you go. All right. Undo our post screws. Should probably just take this off of the Addy stand and put it on our mod because it gets a bit closer to the camera. As soon as you hit the air, go straight to the mount, not even touching the coil. I think you mean mouth bike. Just go straight to your mouth. Yeah, that's my concern with this airflow design is that it's not going to really hit the coil. It's going to hit your. Uh, it's going to go straight into. It's going to come out of here out of the, um, the air holes and kind of just go straight up. But maybe, maybe they get low enough. Let's have a look. If we put the cap on. The airflow kind of looks like it comes out over the posts. I guess that's where the cotton's not going to be. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see what the flavor's like on this thing. It could, it could be not good. There is an alternative cap, a side airflow cap. this guy here, which has the same, that looks like the same to me. That doesn't look like there's any difference at all. Yeah. Silk grown pajamas, the ties keep shifting away. Views from the balcony, we could sleep in for the day. Breakfast in bed, keep the ashes for the tray. Crashing in together, you can head in the way. Marina Del Rey, this game bay. Yeah, we on the same. Oh, okay. So instead of the airflow coming through the top bits here, 
it's going to come through the side, but it's still going to be the same position over the coil. So, you know. It looks like it's going to be kind of the same position. We'll try that in a bit. So, we need a coil for this fucker. Coil. I'm thinking we need like a little, like a 0.25, 0.25-ish coil, maybe. What do we got here? Cue the coil hunt. That's right, Danielle. <laughs> you know me. I want to find something big enough, but not too big. I think we go a little bigger than that. And again, the posts are very close together, so you can't go anything too big on this guy. Yeah, we might have to go something like this, I reckon. I reckon. I reckon this will work, let's see. Let's see. So. Because you got your posts, if we look at the posts guys, they're um they're pretty close together. And you know, you've got to have one leg under one side of the screw and one on the other. You can't really have a, a very long a long coil. So I was thinking one of these uh, MTN coils. MTN Aliens. A dual coil comes in at 0.12, so uh, should be about 0.25. I'm gonna add an extra half wrap because they're parallel, um, and that will give us maybe a little bit more resistance. And I think size-wise, that's about as wide as you're gonna be able to go. So what we'll do is finish this this wrap here
Yeah, this is a little awkward. I think it's maybe geared for anti-clockwise wrap coils a bit, which is annoying. Yeah, it definitely seems to to fit in the grooves a bit better with a an anti-clockwise wrap coil, which is annoying because I fucking hate, I don't want my coils pointing downwards like that. Pointing down into the juice well. I want it pointing upwards, particularly with the way the airflow is, is done. So that is definitely gonna be my first con. You guys know how much I fucking hate it when posts are a set for anti-clockwise wrap coils because 90% of coils that you get are, anti uh, are clockwise wrapped. So, uh. I did get some 20, troublesome 24, uh, some troublesome 4200 coils. That he specifically wrapped anti-clockwise because I fucking hate this so much. Bet the coil hunt continues. MTLs. They're going to be too high in resistance though. That is a fucking pain. That is a fucking pain. Yeah, I have got some counterclockwise wrapped coils, but they're not going to be what we're looking for in resistance. I guess we just fucking try and stick this thing in here. stick it in pointing downwards and then we try and we try and pull it up we try and pull it up that's what we'll do
Problem is, you got this annoying wall in the way. At least it's got nice big flat heads. I do like that. But yeah, now, now our coil looks like that. You guys saying it's choppy? It says the connection's good on my end. Looks fine. It looks fine. Looks fine. Is the stream fine though? It says it's all good on my end, so. Stream's fine. Thanks, Shane. Yeah, I think it's your end, guys. Sorry, because uh, YouTube is telling me that it's all good. All right. I think we've got our coil in the rightish position. We can snip off this leg here. Let's have a look at our top cap. So we have got our coil, so basically I've, I've put it in the position that the, the, the deck sort of wants you to because it's got little, and it's getting pretty close to the side of those holes. This might actually work, the flavour might actually be decent. Because you look at that coil, and they've got these little grooves here and here. So that's where they want you to put the coil in line with those grooves. And that kind of gets the coil up to the height that we were looking for with that airflow. So this might actually work, guys. This might actually work. All right, so we're looking at 0.23 at the moment. Let's bump up the wattage a little bit. And give it a little pulse. Yeah, this might actually work. We'll fucking see. Coil's heating up nice and evenly now. I think we are, uh, are ready for cotton. So despite the annoying post position, you can get a clockwise crap coil in there. You just gotta pull your legs up. You gotta leave some extra length so you can pull it up. Um, that might actually work. Let's check our resistance. We ended up at 0.27, which is pretty good. That's kind of where I wanted it for a little single coil like this. You want it, don't want it too low. You don't want to get it too hot. All right, we'll just let that cool down for a second before we whack some cotton in there. Kneecap, top of the morning to you, mate. Hope you're well.
Justin, yeah, I definitely think it would suit uh, squonking. It's got a squonk pin included, so that is good. That's good. If you wanted to squonk with it, I think you absolutely could. Okay, cotton time, huh? Cotton time. I might try it out, squonking after this, given that the well's not super deep. I might put the squonk pin in later and uh, try it as a squonker. quite high off of that deck so we want to leave a little bit of a little bit of room yeah I reckon that's a good length all right so we'll cut both to the same length Give it a little bit of a fluff. Get it nice and fluffy. little fuckers in so I think the easiest way is to sort of sweep it into the little grooves oh there we go yeah because it's like a little little long bit on the, the juice well there spread it out in the little channel there and we're ready for juice all right, what are we gonna vape? What are we gonna vape? Maybe something from South Africa. I brought a few juices back. Try something out. A lychee watermelon, maybe. Hawaiian punch, maybe? What's this? Mixed berries. Raspberry, lime and ice. That's salt. What's this? Mangochi. Mango lychee ice. Mm. That smells good. I wonder how icy it is. Mangochi. Let's give that a go. Let's try a bit of mangochi. You can't smell, I love a bit of mango. So, that's what she looks like. Mangochi.
All right. Top cap on. Top, top cap on. <laughs> We're good to go. We need a little mod though. This uh, this is a uh, far too big. This mod for this little tiny RDA. We need a little tiny mod. Well, let's put it on that um. Where is it? That new little vicious ant that I got. I don't think we're going to need a whole lot of power for this coil. It's quite small and compact. Should heat up pretty quickly. I reckon 40 watts or something will be good. 30 watts. 0.25 is what it's reading at. Let's try 25 watts to begin with. Looks quite nice on that little vicious ant. Pretty. This is the fade, I think. Fade from Vicious Ant. Cheers, Shane. G'day, Mark. Welcome, bloody welcome, mate. Uh, we've done the hazard so far, Mark. That's what you've missed. The hazard which has uh, been very impressive. Little um, Boro bridge, but also comes with its own tank. You can run it on a mod. And now we've just built uh, the, the sandwich. <laughs> Sam, like sandwich, but they spelt it with an M. Sam, Samdwich. All right, so it's reading now 0 0.26, 0 0.27, 25 watts. got liquid on there. I'm running it with the, um, I don't know, I think it's the, the honeycomb airflow. The honeycomb airflow is nice and smooth. Flavor's pretty decent, I gotta say, but it's not bad. I mean, I, I, I'm trying this liquid for the first time, so maybe I'll drip something I know on here in a minute. I'll bump it up to 30 watts. Airflow's nice and smooth. Let's try it with a different airflow setting. It's hard to tell what the airflow is though. Oh, okay, so you line up the airflow logo with the sandwich logo. Let's try it fully open with the big Cyclops airflow. It's a bit more airy. I'm gonna try this with a juice that I know a bit more. All right, the cotton's kind of dried out. Let's put a bit of a bit of dragon passion from the rituals on here. You can't know I love this juice. I know it well. Then I can really get a feel for the flavour. I think I like the honeycomb airflow more than an open hole. Thank you. 
flavor is good. The flavor is pretty good, I, I gotta say. Um, it's not getting hot or anything. I think our coil choice is sort of about right. So if you've just joined us like Joseph here, um, we're on the Sam, the sandwich, spelled with an M, not an N. The <laughs> sandwich, it's named after me. Uh, <laughs> from a cross vape. And um, we've got a little 0.27 ohm single coil in this thing. 30 watts. Yeah, the flavor's good. I'm not blown away. I know this juice well, as you guys know. I'm not blown away by the flavor, but it's, it's pretty good. Pretty good. Thirty watts, kind of low, says Bet. Yeah, but it's a it's a little RDA. So, I mean, let's bump it up a little bit. We'll go to forty. It's got a pretty small condensed chamber. Try forty watts. We need some co we need some liquid. Definitely think a squonker would work well with this, given the small juice well. It's not going to leak on you though, which is good, given the uh, the airflow is coming through the top and those little little revolver type things. The air's coming through here and then going sort of in. Definitely a bit warmer now, 40 watts. Getting a bit of kind of spitting now at 40 watts though. A little bit of hot liquid on the old tongue. The flavor is, is very nice now though, I gotta say that at 40 watts, good shout there, Bet. Yeah, the flavor is actually very nice now. Although, at 40 watts now, I'm thinking a 21700 would probably be better suited. Because we're gonna burn through our battery pretty quick. Yeah, the flavor is damn good now. Yeah, I think 40 watts is the sweet spot. But yeah, probably put it on a 21700 baud now, given that we're gonna go 40 watts on 0.27. I'm pretty, um, I'm pretty happy with that now, actually, at 40 watts. Flavor is nice. As I said, the, um, the Rituals Dragon Passion, lovely fucking juice, and I'm getting all of that dragon fruit, passion fruit flavor. But yeah, I might whack it on a squonker um, in further testing because this little juice well, it does require a bit of, uh, a bit of topping up. 42, that's, that's, yeah, 42 watts is the answer to life. Maybe we'll, we'll go 42 watts, a uh, GT. <laughs> oh, perfect. It's a little bit juicy though. I did just re-drip though, so yeah, when you first drip on it, it's gonna get a little bit moist, a bit saturated in the old gob. All right, I gotta slow down because I'm vaping 10 milligram salts. And that is um, starting to uh, start to nick me out a bit. <laughs> but yeah, not bad. I, I wanna do some further testing. I wanna put it into squonk mode, run it on a 21700 um, at, uh, at sort of 42 watts.
yeah, quite impressive clouds, as you have just uh, noticed there, um, Ethan. Quite impressive cloudage. Yeah, I think you're right, GT. I think it's um, it's a great little squonk RDA. I think it would go well on a on a squonk mod. I have got a new squonker that I haven't started testing from um, Snowcap. I might whack it on that little mech squonker. All right, I got to slow down because 10 milligram salts is going to start nicking me out. Um, if you got any more questions on the the Sam the sandwich, uh, fire them away, and we'll move on to our third instalment of the build stream. Excuse me, which according to our uh, poll here is going to be the TMF RDA from Dam Vape and. Um, that Mind Flayer guy. Is the outside of the tank hot? Um, it is getting a little warmer now that I'm vaping it at 42 watts and I'm, I'm chain vaping it. There is that alternative plastic cap or acrylic cap that they sell separately, which I'll give a go at a later date because I'm going to get nicked out. Am I enjoying the beer? I am absolutely enjoying that lovely wheat beer there, uh, Aimvec. What about the other cap? Yeah, the other cap. I can't vape any more of this 10 milligram salt, so I'm going to get nicked out. But that is going to be cooler for sure. That's going to be less heat retentive. We'll save that for the review though, cunts. All right. We have this, um, this RDA from uh, Dan Vape and the Mind Flayer, who I still don't know what he does, or she. It's, uh, it's some Instagrammer, I think, or something, that has partnered with Dan Vape. So I think that's the logo for the Mind Flayer. It's like a little 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 brain tentacle guy. You get two top caps with this one though, right out of the box. You get a uh, an Ultim one. It's a one piece Ultim cap. And. You have the RDA itself, comes in two. They sent me a few of them. There's also a stainless steel version. Inside the tin, you get a squonk pin by the looks of it. Yep, little squonker. Um, spare grub screws, O-rings, all the rest of it. And you have the RDA. Which looks, yeah, kind of familiar to some other RDAs, but nice and clean, very clean exterior. Has like a bit of, bit of a pattern. It's like a, it feels like vinyl, like a vinyl record. And then a bit of engraving around the top and the bottom. 810 size drip tip. There we go. Airflow control is, oh, it's the whole top cap. Just whack it on me, little Obey robot stand for a second. So you twist this, yeah, here you go. It's got a stopper, so it only spins like that and like that, which is good. Makes it easy to get it on and off a mod. Take off the top cap. And we've kind of seen this deck design before where you've got like outside posts and then you put your coils on the inside kind of pointing inwards rather than a central post system with the coils pointing outwards. So I've seen this sort of thing uh, before. It's not uh, a brand new concept. Got your little slits. So your airflow is gonna be coming through the sides here and kind of pointed on a sideways downward trajectory. And I reckon it's gonna be suited to, I reckon it's 24 millimeters in diameter. I reckon it's going to be suited to like a couple of 2.5 millimeter aliens. You got a, a positive and a negative terminal. 
So one coil pointing in this way, another coil pointing in that way, I think is how it's gonna work. 510 pin is hybrid safe. If you are wondering if Frank would focus on the 510 pin, thank you, Frank. So let's just whack it on here. And we're gonna need some Allen keys. So it's a 1.5 millimeter Allen key that I'm using. These little fucking grub screws unscrewed. Nice little hook design on the post holes. So it should be pretty easy to install our coils. grub screws are screwed all the way out so we can get easy access all right we need some coils for this fucker oh see the beer yes uh, that's a, a good point there uh, GT put a four millimeter single coil in here I reckon um, you'll have to have yeah, four millimeters, something decent in size, or two 2.5s. I'm gonna go two 2.5s, because we've done a lot of single coil stuff, so let's just do a dual coil, hey? Dual coil. Right, coils. The, the coil hunt begins, Bet. thinking two 27 gauge cores. Yeah. Two 27 gauge core, 2.5 IDs. Triple twenty sevens. Good. 
Cloud Revolutions. Fucking Frank. Why are you focusing on the corner? There you go. Uh, Cloud Revolution coils. He's since changed his uh, packaging. All right. These are some older ones. But Game Over Man Triple 27s. Sorry, I just had to fucking silence my watch because people are messaging me. Triple 27 gauge cores, three, and a 36 gauge wrap, dual coil, 0.11. Should go to Bunnings and get a screwdriver draw for my coils. Yeah, I should. Organization is, um, not, well, some things I'm very organized on and other things I fall into bad habits. Rightio, these should fit in here nicely, I think. Now, what I think we're gonna need to do is kind of bend the legs upwards, like give them a little kink. To show you how gorgeous these coils are, as always, from Mr. Andy G. Beautifully wrapped the Lalians. Because we've got to kind of hook these guys in here. We've got to hook them in. Although we can kind of... They've got open sides, so actually we can just do that. Yeah, that's fine. But if you put a little hook in them, they'll, uh, they'll kind of stay there nicely. Kind of just... There we go, look at that. Easy peasy. So I reckon we um, kind of get them close-ish to the airflow. Looking good. This has been pretty easy to build, I gotta say. That's looking pretty bang on. Just gonna put them kind of upwards of the airflow so the air kind of comes from the side and then goes underneath the coils. That looks, that looks all right. It's very easy to build, guys, I've got to say. Very easy. That was, uh, that was a cinch. That was a cinch. And then we drop liquid through the top. It's just gonna hit the coils and not go in the airflow. Yeah, fuck yeah. All right, let's um, properly tighten down our grub screws. Make sure they're nice and snug. Let's skip this track. This sounds a bit fucking wishy-washy. Snip our legs.
I need to get some new snippers. Every time I do a build stream, it reminds me that these are kind of on their last legs. All right, check our top cap, make sure that we're not, not scraping on the coil legs. My snips couldn't cut jello, says Bet. Yeah. <laughs> I keep, every time I do a build stream, I'm like, oh, fuck, that's right. I need to get new snippers. I got a good recommendation from uh, Breeze Tones, but I forgot to go and buy them, so we'll make do. All right, let's uh, pulse and pinch these fuckers. That'll do. There we go. Alright. And they are heating evenly. Looks good, so I think you got a, quite an array of options in terms of coil height. These could come up a bit higher if I wanted to. You could go a bit lower, but you can see the airflow here. Coil's kind of sitting just above it, so fucking that'll do. If it's not good, I'll play around with it later, but I think that's gonna be... It's a pretty simple build, I gotta say. That was very easy, uh, installing the coils. Wicking should be pretty straightforward as well. Just let those cool down. They've got a bit more mass to them than the others. So just have a quick little beer, little beer swoop. Breeze Tones, good to see you, Adam. My next purchase is Precision Scissors because hashtag need. The best scissors that I have seen I saw in South Africa. Um, I got a I got a photo of the brand, but I can't remember. I'll check it out later. But Craig from Obey Robot had these fucking amazing shears. They were best, best cotton cutting scissors. And he's like super anal about them. They are only to be used for cutting cotton. Um, and uh, they were fucking, they were beautiful. I'll send you a pic when I, when I get off of here, Adam. They look like fucking awesome scissors. I think they were German. And uh, yeah, I want to get me some of those because they were fucking just, just sliced through the cotton. All right, we need cotton. However, these little fuckers, these little UD ones, these little UD scissors actually do a pretty damn good job, I got to say. Cut through the cotton well. I think they just came in like a micro build kit from uh, good old UD. Good old UD. Slide those filthy pics in my DMs, says Adam. Yeah, I will, mate. I'll send you a photo. I had, I, they were so good, I took a pic. I wanted to go and order some myself. And I'll order some of those and some fucking new wire cutters. All right, in goes one. A little trickier getting your cotton through because you know, you got these posts in the way. That's the only thing. Coil installation, very easy. Uh, cotton, a little little bit more tricky, just because you've got to reach in there. 
but nothing too bad. That looks pretty good. Uh, I'm going to cut about a centimetre. Start with one side and do a little bit of thinning, a bit of fluffing. Remember to go underneath the cotton, as uh, Mike always says. Fluff it out, get it nice and fluffy. Looks good. All right, and tuck them in. Try and make sure your cotton is not getting in the way of the airflow. I think that seems to be pretty good. So we'll do the other side, I reckon the same length, about a centimeter. Little fluff out. Looks all right to me. You kind of just sweep it in there. All right, there we go, wicked. Ready for the juice. What are we going to vape on? What are we going to vape on, cunts? Something new or something in terms of an old favourite? Let's, uh, let's have a look. What do we got here? What do we got here? Sorry, I'm not going to bring in a new flavour. I'm going to go with, uh, oh, love this liquid. It's always good to test new stuff with something you're familiar with. Uh, a bit of strapped candy powered vapes, rhubarb and custard. Um, I've talked about this a bunch of times. It is, um, it's not like your custard that you would ordinarily get in an e-liquid. It's a, a hard boiled sweet that's uh, rhubarb and custard and it doesn't doesn't have that kind of classic vape custard flavor, which I'm not really a fan of. This tastes like bang on the old English sweets. The old rhubarb and custard hard boiled English sweet. It's, um, it's fucking delish. Been really liking this line from uh, Strapped. They make that bubblegum drumstick that I love. They do the, uh, the Dr. Pepper flavor that I've been really enjoying. So I think we're good. Now the drip tip that this thing comes with, let's put our little top cap on for starters. The drip tip that this thing comes with is pretty cool. It's, it's like a little two part drip tip. If Frank would focus. Uh, you can unthread, is it unthread or O-rings? Oh, I dropped it. unthreads if I can get it to there we go so it unthreads like so and then they they sell like a little a little pack of drip tips well it's one drip tip and you got like little different colored 
top pieces. There's clear, black, silver, purple, red, and pink. And well, as you can't know, I'm quite partial to a little bit of pink. So I might just thread that on there. There we go. And go with a bit of pink. Hey. Very nice. All right, now we need a fucking pink mod to put this on. I think I know the one. I think I know the one. The old swordfish. I'll tell you what our final resistance ended up being before we do that. Point one three, right around that point one two we were expecting. I think this is going to... Hey, come on, you fucking butterfingers. Oh, that fits nicely. That looks good. You guys know how much I love the swordfish mech from Rock Vape. And uh, those two, they look like they were just made for each other. Very nice, very nice, bit of matchy match action. We need a battery though. Did you guess swordfish before I pulled it out, Steve? <laughs> Good work, mate, well done. We have ignition. Airflow wide open. All right, here we go. Oh, that's one puff immediately, immediately like this. The flavor is bang on. I just realized this drip tip, it matches my fucking, uh, my new earrings. What do you reckon, cunts? <laughs> Matchy match that shit, Mike Vapes. And you can just drip straight through the top because your coils are like right underneath the drip tip and it's just gonna hit your coils. Away you go. Flavor is fan fucking tastic. Um, damn vape have made some damn good RDAs recently. Um, this little banger, if you guys remember the nitrous, the nitrous RDA um, from damn vape. I think was that last year. It was in my best ofs, I reckon, from 2021. And they know how to make a good RDA. They know how to make a good RDA. Flavor is bang on. As good as it gets for a dual coil, you know, 0.1-ish ohm RDA. And that's what I think this is aimed at, is your, your nice, you know, low resistance cloud chasing, but with flavor. Airflow is where I love it. Like, just the perfect amount of restriction. Some people will be like, oh, I want more airflow. If you like a really airy RDA, it's not gonna give you like crazy amounts of airflow because it's just got two little slits here. But I like it. It's it's where I want it for um, for airflow. It's just perfect. Just a little bit of restriction, but still very open. By no means a restrictive air RDA, but I think the coil position is perfect. I'm not getting spitting, but it's high enough that the flavor, the the airflow is getting underneath the coil. Fuck me, that's good. Perfect. Perfect. I don't have much more to say on that. That's a great dual coil banger. If 
you like dual coil RDAs, if you like clouds, but you also want it to be flavoursome, that is going to give it to you. And it looks nice too. I like how clean it is. No logos, very minimal. Looks really nice on the, uh, the swordfish. Beautiful combo. That's awesome. I mean, what more do you have to say? It's clean, it's minimal, it looks nice, and it vapes great. I really like it. And these drip tips that they offer. I mean, you don't get the pink drip tip out of the box, but let's do a little quick a little price check. Price check on prune juice. Price check on prune juice. Um, what is it called again? The TMF. That motherfucker. V2. Did I have the TMF V1? Did I ever get that? Uh, what other colours does it come in, Azza? I have uh, silver. I have the silver one. Uh, so I know it comes in silver. I'm going to call it that motherfucker. That's, that's the name of this RDA. That motherfucker. Uh, stainless steel, gunmetal, and matte black is what it comes in. Yep. And we haven't even tried the Ultim Cap. There's an Ultim Cap, remember? Um... What is the price on this one? Let's have a look. Thirty-five pounds. I can see it for in the UK. Oh, that's the TF TMF V one. Oh, okay. This looks a lot better than the first one. This looks a lot better than the first one. I will say that. I didn't have the first one. Just looking at the V1. Um, I can't see it. Oh, the first one was 22 millimeters. There you go. First one was 22. price. So I mean if it's 35 pounds it's gonna be 45 US something like that. Yeah 40 euros so it's gonna be 40 40 dollars US. There's a few few sites I can't tell you them obviously. Um, what are these drip tips called? Let's find that out. The TMF 810 Drip Tip Kit. Drip, drip Tip Kit. Okay, so from the same website that we saw in the UK selling the 13 pounds. There you go, 13 pounds and you get fucking six different colors six different color options which is pretty cool for uh, for 13 pounds so again it's be under 20 dollars us that's a good deal kneecap does obey robot ship to ost Austria? Austria? Uh, I think so. If they don't have it available on their website, then um, just email them because they've got very competitive shipping rates for international shipping. Some of the best I've seen in, in international shipping rates. So I'm sure they'll be happy to get it to you in Austria. Um, just uh, have a look on their, their site. And um, if they don't, 
then just shoot them a message or an email on their um, Instagram or, or email and I'm sure they'll do it for you. Craig's a fucking top cunt. He does he goes above and beyond to get gear into your hands. Is the base exposed or is the image lying? Um, I guess there is a tiny little smidgen of the base visible. That's a good, good observation. You can see there's like a half millimeter of the stainless steel. It's not really visible. The reason I think they've done that, um, who was it that asked that question? GT, uh, is this top cap spins. So you don't want it going all the way to the bottom because if you twist that top cap, it's gonna scratch your mod. It's gonna scratch your mod up if that went all the way to the bottom. There's a hair. They've done it quite well. They've just left a little hair here. You can just feel it a slight, a slight difference. Because yeah, when you, especially on something like this beautiful rock bait, uh, Frank, fucking hell, mate, you are useless. I don't want to scratch up that lovely finish on there. And so by having the top cap not quite go all the way to the bottom, I can easily twist my top cap here and not have it scratching the, uh, the mod, the 510 plate. So I think that's very intentional what they've done there. And I'm very happy to see that because yeah, I don't want to fuck up my shit adjusting airflow. Shane suggests using clear protectors. That is always a good option. Using a little clear, those little 510 protectors, which were much more of a thing back in the day. Shall we quickly chuck on the uh, Ultim cap and just see how that works? I mean, I don't expect it to be a whole lot different. There you go, it seems to be a little, it seems to look a little bit smaller, the Ultim cap on there, but there you go, you get the Ultim cap with it. Delicious. Uh, MSI Slayer, just got into vaping and off the SIGs, wondering in your opinion, what's the best MTL sub -ohm tanks for flavour? Um, to be honest, I haven't had a whole lot of MTL pre-made coil stuff for a little while, but I do need to start testing the Berserker Elite Kit, which is a pre-made coil Berserker. And there's also the BP Mods lightsaber which is like a pre-made coil thing and I think there's some MTL options in there so don't have a good answer for you right now but I do have a couple of things to start testing in that category so I will have some answers for you soon enough stay subscribed watch for watch for me thoughts I don't mind that uh, Ultim cap at all. That is just fine. But I think the metal one looks it looks nicer. It looks better than that. So there you go. Any more questions on this uh, damn vape? Damn vape. It's a damn vape. Otherwise, we shall uh, jump on over to our next build. Zeus Nano 2. There you go. That's a good option, Justin. Zeus 2. That's probably a good. That's that's a good one. Good good help there, guys. I need another fucking beer, and we need to build another thing. So we're gonna do that momentarily. Um, so talk amongst yourselves while I grab a fucking VB. I might take a piss as well.
All right, I better not play any more of that or else we'll get a copyright strike. <laughs> uh, the Aussies will know what I'm talking about. BB, the best cold beer is Vic. Delicious, cold, bitter beer. Hard-earned thirst needs a big cold beer. Still piss no matter the soundtrack. Fuck off, Mark. Get fucked. Love me, VBs. Only full blown Aussies drink VB. That's exactly right, Lee. It's exactly right. All right. We are on to our last instalment. Our last bit of the build stream. The Labs MTL RTA, I believe. From BP Mods. <laughs> Mark says, fuck off, I'm Aussie as they come. Should be drinking VB then, mate. Do you drink VB because it's got your initials on it? No, I was drinking VB uh, long before, long before I started the vaping bogan stuff. I just love it. I don't care what anyone says. Like, there's two camps in Australia: people that love VB and then people that hate VB. Okay, labs above any idea. Um, not sure what that means. Above any idea. So this is a collab designed in Italy. So I can't show you the back because there's a website on the box here, but it's a gravity fed, easy building, juice flow control, typical Italian relish. It says that. Got to cover the website, but it says typical Italian relish. I like putting relish on my sandwich. Is that the kind of relish you're talking about? Professional MTL vaping. <laughs> so this is Labs, Italian, Italian designers, Labs. Is there any websites on this? No, I think I can show you. So it's got lots of parts. My Patreon saw me unbox this the other day and was a little confused at first, but I figured it out. Um, so yeah, it's got like a alternative bells, like little inside chambers. So you've got the tank itself, the gun metal here. Very nice, very, very Italian looking, very clean, very minimal. Um, and then you've got these little alternative uh, like basically the, the chamber, the chimney, the bell, as you might say. You've got alternative ones, which you can put on the inside. I don't know anyone who'd be vaping relish. <laughs> I know, right? Typical Italian relish. You got some crazy pin stuff going on here. You got bag of spare O-rings, screws, some Clapton coils in there. We won't be needing those, but we might be needing the pins. What the hell's this fucking long thing? Sam, do the stepped chamber insert and try it with the rum and raisin. That shit is great for any tea. Okay. Thanks for the tip there, GT. So yeah, you've got these, these alternative inserts. They're all kind of stepped, GT. Do you mean the stepped with the little holes? These two look the same, so I'm not sure what the what is the difference between these two. I can't really see. Maybe I'm wrong. But they look they look the same. Anyway, this one looks different. As you can see, it doesn't have holes in it. 
So you got those little inserts. We got a 510 drip tip up the top here. Um, so Labs, Lucid, Omnibus, Soul. Is that Latin or Italian? That's not Latin. So this is, oh, there we go. Reverse threaded fill cap. Screw that back on. Airflow down the bottom here, non-adjustable. The airflow comes in via pins. Uh, we might need to screw it onto a mod. Oh, it just comes off, that's right. Yeah. We just pull it off. Off comes the top. There you go. We'll come back to the build deck in a second. So, juice is gonna come down through these little horts. Uh, horts? Horts! These little holes. <laughs> um, it's a, a top-down system. You got juice flow control via this little swivel system. You can see there, you can see your juice flow works. And then if you take a screwdriver and you poke out, I think. Oh no, through the center here. There you go, through the center. So through the center you can poke out There we go. That's your little inside chamber. So it's a little different, slightly different. This one's got a little bit more kind of curvy action going in there. This one's a bit more of a harsh step down. And then you can put in, you know, these crazy ones. With little divots drilled out of them. So I'm not sure which one we should use, but we'll figure that out later. There's lots of parts and pieces on this one. This guy here, um, this guy here is, is that for our, our airflow pin insert? So here's your deck, kind of like a K-Fun ether style deck, nice big flathead screws, kind of like the ether, like that. Airflow pins in the middle there, little cotton bits are going to go into these little triangles here. Liquid, as we know, is going to come down from the top. And I'm guessing that this thing here is, is this what helps us get the pin out? No? Very, if it is meant to screw out, it's very tight. Oy. Oh, that's what this is for. That goes in there, that helps you get your thing out. I was using a screwdriver and doing it all wrong. But if we were to put a bell in, all right, put our bell back in to take the bell out. That's what that's for. Very good. Figured that out. So the pins themselves for the for the fucking airflow. I am guessing 
we use there we go I needed to use some uh, pliers to kind of just loosen it off in the factory it was very tight but you use the same tool to get your pin out There you go. And you've got a bunch of different pin options. There's one with two little holes. Um, and the rest are single holes with varying diameters, ranging from 0.8 to 1 to 1.1 to 1.2 to 1.5. No markings on these, so it is. <laughs> going to be the old eyeball method to try and work out which one is the size you're looking for, which is always fun. I mean, look. So that's going to be 0.8. That's going to be 0.8. That's going to be one. That's going to be 1.2. 1. 1.5. 1. 1. Yep. Oh, there's a 1.1 1. 1 and a 1.2. So. One, uh, sorry, 0 0.8, 1, 1 1.1, 1 1.2, and then you jump up to uh, 1.5. So they're all, they're all very tight, I think. It's six options. They're not big airflow. I want to go for the one, one millimeter. So I think that's this guy here. Let's put him in. One millimeter. That's my chosen size. 1.1. This is an MTL. Yes, bet. Very much MTL, given that the largest airflow pin is uh, 1.5. Although, if you put no airflow pin in, it'll probably work, and that will give you, I guess, two-ish millimetres. So if you go no airflow pin, probably two millimetres. But either way, it's going to be um, mouth to lung, for sure. For sure. All right, let's make sure that's snug. Put this back on here. And we can start building. We'll figure out what bell we're going to put in later. but we can start building it. Nice big flathead screws. So let's just back those off. <laughs> Sergio. What am I doing with my life? Watching a build stream at 6am on products I have no interest in, drinking beer. You're doing exactly what you should be doing with your life, mate. All right, we need an MTL coil. I'm thinking, what do we got here? Coils by Scott. Too low. And that's too low. Mm. Here we go.
nice little MTL build. Uh, awesome coils from Coils by Scott. Uh, a little 2.5 MTL, six wrap, 0.72, right around where I like it for uh, MTLs. Two strands of 30 gauge wrapped in 40 gauge. Yeah, Coils by Scott, Fuse Clapton's. Lovely fella. Good to catch up with him when we're in the UK. Let's uh, show you the coil real quick. If Frank would focus. Frank. There we go. Really nice, a tidy little micro Clapton. And it should be a pretty straightforward build here, really. I'm just gonna... Get you underneath the... There we go, underneath the screw heads. Love a big flathead screw head. Very easy to... Oop. Get our coil leg under there. Oh no, what's happened to the music cunts? One leg is in. Let's just fucking get that music happening, dickheads. We're going to get our other coil leg in, push our coil over a little bit. There we are. Very nice. Tighten down. Looks good. Yeah, super easy to build. Big flat heads. Looks like we don't have to be super close with our coil cutting, which is good. Bob's your uncle. It's in. Uh, we do want to drop our wattage down a bit though. 46 watts through this coil, not a good idea. 11, that'll be good. Lovely. Stay focused, Frank. All 
Alright, beauty. Fucking ready to go, I think. No hot spots. No hot spots. Fun Prime or billet style mods is better for MTL. Uh, they're like the one is a specific product, their physics, and the other one is a very open platform. Your um, your billet or Boro style mods, you can put dozens and dozens of different bridges in. Some of them for MTL, some of them are not. Some of them more restricted direct line. Um, K Fun Prime is an awesome RTA. Definitely love my K Fun Prime. But uh, when you're talking Billet style mods, billet box style mods, there's, it depends on what bridge you put in it. There are so many great bridges out there. So many great bridges. So, you know, one is going to be a specific RTA like the K Fun Prime. Great, but yeah, billets, it really depends on what bridge you put in it. All fucking righty. It is time to put a bit of cotton in this fucker. Get it wicked up and see how it goes. See how it vapes. How come all these coil packs only contain two coils? It's kind of just the industry standard. You know, it started with coils for dual coil products needing two. And, you know, even when you get MTL coils, they still come with two coils. It's just, just the industry standard, really. You can, some coilers do offer like multi-packs, but most of them are going to be um, sets of two. It's just sort of the, it's just become the industry standard, really. All right, I'm not really going to um, thin out this cotton, fluff it a little bit, because gravity fed usually is going to send a fair bit of liquid through. Looking at these holes, they seem reasonably open. We're going to be doing mouth to lung with a 50 50 liquid anyway. So, I have not wicked this before, but I am guessing we want to kind of have enough cotton to fill up our little triangle down here. Because our top cap's going to come down and basically these little, these little shoots here are going to line up with our cotton. So, I'm, I'm going to guess... Just guess, you know, maybe a centimeter or so of cotton is going to be enough. Just fluff it up a little bit. Not going to thin it out, just fluff it. Fluff it and stuff it. And hope that that is adequate. Put our little top cap on. I can't really see down through those holes. But I'm hoping that that is enough cotton. This is going to be one of those slightly trickier RTAs to know if the wicking is right on it. I'm guessing that the little shoots are going to end up sort of somewhere on the side of the cotton and kind of send liquid to the to the wicks. Saint, Shane says she'll be right, mate. Yeah, I think so. I think so. 
Right, we need a liquid for it now. Now, I think someone said, who was it, Azza or Mark? To put an NET in it and actually extract the tobacco, but we've already got my favorite NET going in this little hazard. So I'm thinking maybe we put a bit of a bit of Rebel Bogan, a bit of Plum Job. It's not an NET, it's not a naturally extracted tobacco, but it is a tobacco. Ah, oh, you read my mind, Mark. Bit of Plum Job. That's right, that's what we're gonna do. Put a bit of Plum Job in here. know this liquid. I talk about it all the time. It is from my own Rebel Bogan range. My little collab with Rebel Rebellion Vape. And uh, it's delicious. It's not your typical tobacco. It's like a fruity tobacco with the sweet red plums. And even people who don't normally like tobaccos, well, from what I've been told, they fucking love it. So, now we can put our little cap on. And we're gonna put our little chimney on, which has got our juice flow controlled. Oh wait, hang on, we need a We need to decide what chamber we're gonna use. Because we got all these options. I'm kinda of interested to see what these little holy ones are like. These ones with the little holes. Of which I haven't quite figured out the difference. tell the difference between these two. I just I can't <laughs> I can't see the difference between these two here. They look look the same. Let's go with this one. The stepped they're all stepped. Which one? They're all stepped. Fucking hell, Frank. Focus on the bloody things. I want to try the little holy one. The squared steps bring out something extra in dark liquids. The squared step. This one? Which one are we doing? Are we doing the left, middle, or right? Your left, Cheech. Your left is my left. Middle. GT reckons middle. All right, everyone's saying middle. We've had a few votes for middle. Let's try middle. All right, in you go. So that goes in, middle is in. No, your other left. Fuck you, Cheech. All right, that goes on there. And that threads in. So juice flow control looks like it automatically closes it when you open the top cap. And then when you fully close it, it must open up the juice flow. So we'll just go with that.
There we go. All right, hopefully this works. We shall see. Now, what are we gonna put this thing on? I did wanna try it out. Because the lightsaber mod from BP Mods comes with like a 510 adapter. They do send me a gunmetal one. And this lightsaber mod looks pretty cool from uh, from BP mods. It's like an AIO, but there's a 510 cap for it. So you can run whatever fucking tank you want on it. Like it's this little AIO thing, like with pre-made coils. But, if you take off the little tank, then you can fix a 510 adapter. And then we can, oh, that looks good. Look at that. Frank, come on, mate. It's got a little variable wattage thingy on here. And a fire button on the back there, and that looks very tidy. Started it. Seventeen watts, point eight ohms is what it's reading at. Yeah, I mean, this little lightsaber mod looked good as a AIO, but uh, as I said, it also has its uh, 510 plate available. Which allows you to run your own RTAs. I think it only does 20 watts, the small version. This is the S model. There's a slightly bigger one that's uh, the L model that has a bigger battery. So far, that is vaping very nicely. I can see bubbles coming up, which is a good sign, which means we're getting wicking. Forty watts on the S model and sixty watts on the L model. Yeah, the L model's got a bigger thing, and you can change out these little um, sleeves little wooden sleeves that you get for it. You can change those out and get different finishes. It's a very classy looking mod. I mean, BP mods always make nice looking stuff. And I don't mind that at all for a little, it's an internal battery. I think this one is like 1500 ma. What is it? It says on here. 1500 ma on the Model S and 2100 ma on the Model L. So for, you know, 
17 watts, 1500 mar will get me through a day. That's lovely. That's fucking lovely. Yeah. I mean, plum job tastes great out of this RTA. Getting all those plum flavours, the tobacco flavours. Delicious. Yeah, that coil seems to have settled at 0.77 ohms, which is right where I like a little MTL build. It looks expensive, Bet, but it's BP mod, so it's probably not going to be terribly expensive. These little um, lightsaber. <laughs> They're going to get sued by Disney, I'm sure. It's a really tidy looking little uh, MTL setup, that. Reckon it's better than the Pioneer, or too early to tell? Uh, a bit too early to tell, but um, it's vaping. Like, as good. Sometimes with the Pioneer I would get a gurgle or two, and I'm not getting any gurgling on this at all. Yeah, very classy setup, Bet. I agree. Flavour is fantastic. As I said, for an MTO RTA, this is exactly what I want. It's on par with, you know, some of my favourites. Um, it looks really nice. It was easy to fucking build, easy to wick. Yeah, I reckon BP Mods have done it again. They've done another really solid little RTA, and I'm quite liking this, um, this little lightsaber. Beautiful. Fucking beautiful, mate. That's a great little MTL setup, that. I'll be happy to take that around. So yeah, a fucking thumbs up on the Labs MTL RTA. No issues with wicking. Haven't had a dry hit. Cannot complain. Cannot complain with that. So I think we've had a pretty good run today. Great dual coil RTA from uh, RDA from Dan Bay. Very, very flavoursome. Um, so far, so good with this little sandwich thing. Nothing outstanding. Really loving this uh, hazard. And uh, yeah, this labs thing, fucking impressed as well. No dramas in setting up any of these devices. Would recommend all of them as initial first thoughts, all right? Just let me fucking test them and do a proper review, but I think that looks fucking really classy, this little gunmetal MTL setup. How easy is the hazard to wick? Very easy. Very easy to wick that hazard. I had no issues at all. Just lay them in the trenches, off you go. Bog on Friday, um, probably not Friday, Azza. I've got a wedding, Claire and I are doing a wedding on Friday, so the bog will probably happen uh, either Thursday or tomorrow. Tomorrow or Thursday, I reckon. Or could even be Saturday, we'll see. But yeah, not Friday's the only day it won't happen. Very happy with that. Nick Wicks wants some pigtails. Thank you for the super chat, mate. I will oblige you absolutely with uh, with some pigtails. Does the lightsaber stand up on its own? Yeah. It's got a slightly rounded base, but it stands up. Probably not on my hand, but it stands up, no worries. Probably a little easy to, yeah, it's definitely easy to knock over, I would say that. The rounded bottom does make it easy to knock over, but it will stand up on its own. 
Uh, Serge, I don't wear a suit. Claire's my wife is a wedding celebrant, so she wears a nice wedding outfit because she's the celebrant. I just do the sound. I just play around with the PA. So I, I just wear something with a collar, but I don't wear a suit. <laughs> Bet asked, how much does this RTA hold? How much does this RTA hold? Good question. Um, what do we got to say on the card here? 2.7 mils of capacity. So just under three milliliters. Not bad for an MTL tank. 2.7 is fine, really. Could be a little more, but 2.7. Bas basically Subaru, yeah, I'm I'm a DJ. I, I just, the main thing I do is when the couple are doing their vows, often they talk too quietly, so I've got to turn up the volume so that people can hear what they're fucking saying. Um, and then turn it back down when my wife takes the mic because she knows how to use one. <laughs> and I cue a few songs for the processional and recessional and all that shit. But yeah, basically a DJ. But it's just, I just play songs from Spotify. It's I don't really DJ. <laughs> Joseph, you're looking for a new box mod. What setup would I recommend to go with for a hundred dollars? You want a dual coil box mod? Or single coil. What about the new version of the Odin DNA 250C? There's no two times 2700 mods on the market. Yeah, well, the the new Odin will be a dual 21700, so don't worry. We're not changing that. That's not going to be until next year sometime, alright? Early stages of development. Nice. Very nice. All right, dickheads. I don't know whether there's a whole lot more to really say here. We've had uh, a good run of products today. Some nice nice RBAs that have come out. Something for your Boros or, or a tank if you want to put it in an RTA, that uh, Hazard. Um, nice little flavor banger in the sandwich. And a uh, great MTL RTA here. And then if you're not into that sort of stuff, well, you got that dual coil Dam vape, um, what was it called again? The, the, that motherfucker, the TMF, that motherfucker. <laughs> um, great, great RDA that. I will thoroughly enjoy this. Dual 26650s, Justin, no, nobody uses 26, they're just shit batteries, 26650s. I'm glad that uh, that phased out fairly quickly because they're just a shit battery, the 26650. Haven't heard that in a while, that's a forgotten battery. All right, dickheads, um, I'm gonna bugger off. There's not much more to really say here. As I said, we've had fun, some good products, uh, full reviews coming on these and a bunch of stuff that I'm backed up on. So um, stay tuned for that. I will eventually get my best ofs for 2022 out. Uh, I need to get a few more reviews done before I start doing that because some of the products that I need to review might actually make it into the best of videos. So I kind of need to do reviews for those first, I think. Um, so yeah, might be before Christmas, I get the best of 2022s. Might be after Christmas, I'll see, depends on how quickly I can get on top of the back catalogue. Um, but yeah, some live reviews for sure. Um, good mention there, Shane. Um, don't know what I'm going to have in the way of live build streams, but uh, I, need to, I need to get some stuff reviewed. So I'll probably do a few live reviews on products because that kind of speeds up the whole review process, not having to edit them and all the rest of it. So stay tuned for some live stuff. Um, Patreons will have a live later this week. And um, yeah, I'll see you fuckers on the YouTubes very soon. But uh, until then, sub on your bloody dicks off or your fucking tits off. Doesn't matter what it is you're vaping on. 
As long as you're not banging the buggers. All right. And a big thanks to everybody that tuned in. I wouldn't be here without you guys watching. Thank you to everybody that uh, super chatted. Uh, appreciate that. I'll buy beer with your money because that's, that's what I do. Um, and uh, yeah, if you want to support the channel, please do. Think about becoming a Patreon um, because those guys keep me independent. I truly appreciate their support. I wouldn't be able to do it without them. Um, so yeah, hit the Patreon links in the description or uh, Shane's put them in the chat a bunch of times. Um, there's access to my little Patreon blog each week as well as uh, we have a little Patreon community in the Facebook group and the Zoom room. You can hang out with me. We watch football on the weekends um, or other sports depending on what's happening. Uh, and we just drink beer and have, have fun, play a bit of online poker and it's a great little community. So think about becoming one of those. But if you can't, that's all good. As I said, doesn't matter. As long as you're watching, as long as you're vaping, don't let any fucking crooked politician tell you otherwise. Um, you guys know, 95% safer than fucking smoking. So... Cheers for tuning in. Cheery fucking O-cunts.